Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Seek and Destroy show. And today we're going to talk about this new novel that is available right now for $9.99 from Random House. It's called Before the Batman, an original movie prequel. And so this is, I guess, some events that will be tying into the new movie. It's inspired by the new movie. It's written by David Lumen. And like I said, you can get it out there on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble, Target.com, wherever you want to buy your books. And I'll put the Amazon link down below if you want to buy it there. $9.99, not a bad price at all. But I don't know how much of this will obviously tie into the new movie. Um, this, what we're going to talk about today, this is a 130-something page you know, young adult novel. Um, I really like the size, the little digest size, and it's in hardcover. Really cool. It's, it's printed really well. But for today's episode, we're not going to talk about the whole book, all 130 whatever pages. We're just going to talk about the first 68 pages, which is called part one. So this book is split into two parts. Uh, basically, the events of Bruce as an eight-year-old boy, and then up to when he's 17, 18, and he kind of starts to figure out maybe I want to go down a path of helping people or saving people as a vigilante. That's kind of the first half of the book. And then I'm guessing the second half will be, you know, kind of him going from that moment to realizing he can dress like a giant bat. <laughs> so so we'll get into that in a future episode, uh, you know, pretty soon. But because we're talking about things that could potentially be, you know, tied to this movie, I do want to give a spoiler warning for people who want to go into the Batman completely free. I would say turn away now because there are some things in here that are part of the world that I imagine are true to the movie because obviously the writer wouldn't be able to put some of the stuff in there if it was going to be contradicted in the movie. So there are some things in here that might surprise you and, uh, and might spoil some of the experience you have with the upcoming film. And if you want to go into that blind, I would say go away now and, uh, and just pick this up and maybe read it after you see the movie. All right, so let's get to the story beats that I saved on a, a document here. I put bullet points down and I just wanted to mention these things that take place in the book. So this isn't really a review review, more of a discussion about things that happen in this. And like I said, there will be spoilers. So last chance, turn away now if you don't want the spoilers. Uh, but so first up, we have Bruce and his parents no longer live in Wayne Manor. The book starts off when Bruce is eight years old and he doesn't live at Wayne Manor. He lives at Wayne Tower with his parents downtown Gotham City, kind of near the financial district. And, uh, and the reason for that is because Thomas Wayne has left his career as a doctor kind of behind and is getting into politics and running for mayor of Gotham, which could explain why he gets killed. So it could change the dynamic because typically, you know, the Wayne murders have always been like a random act of crime um, and it's maybe inspired by other things, but typically random and involve Joe Chill and stuff. And in this case, it seems like Thomas Wayne possibly could have been assassinated by someone or some group of people. And so uh, so in this case, you know, this hasn't happened yet. Their death hasn't happened yet. So they are going back to the mansion because Thomas Wayne has donated the Wayne mansion to the city to be an orphanage. And so there are orphans that are living here now, which also reminded me of the Chris Nolan universe where Bruce Wayne donated you know, his house to the orphanage at, or the city to become an orphanage at the end of The Dark Knight Rises. So that kind of reminded me of that. And then Thomas Wayne being involved in politics, that reminded me a little bit of the Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix. So, um, so some of this isn't things we haven't seen before, but they're doing it all up front, which is which pretty interesting. Um, and so at this orphanage, uh, one of the people that live there is Edward Nashton. He is an orphan from Gotham and he sings in the choir and he's an eight year old boy as well. So it looks like him and Bruce are similar ages and they see each other, you know, like Bruce is uh, looking up at the kids in the choir and, and Edward, who is obviously will become the Riddler when he grows up, uh, he's looking out into the crowd and he's seeing all these families and all these people, including Bruce and his family. And he starts to build a disdain for the rich of Gotham and for families in general and that kind of, you know, connection in life. And it starts, he starts separating at this young age from humanity to an extent and then starting to become an outsider. So they kind of set all that up. So I was surprised when I picked up this book first, I didn't think the Riddler would be in it, but it looks like he, his like connective tissue to Bruce Wayne is a lot more connective than even I thought it would be. Uh, Cause I had some theories about the new movie, but I wasn't sure how deep their connection would run. And it seems like they've always kind of in some way known of each other's existence to, to an extent. Maybe Bruce didn't know who Edward is. He just is like a creepy kid who was staring at him, but Edward knows who Bruce Wayne is. So um, then the book jumps ahead uh, 10 years. So the Waynes have now passed and Bruce is going to a prestigious boarding school. And when he takes summer breaks and comes back to Gotham, he is, uh, you know, meeting with Alfred and training to do combat training because Alfred is a former medic and soldier from England. And so he's teaching Bruce some of the stuff that he knows. So that's going on at the uh, beginning of the book as well. 
but Bruce has a secret side project that he's keeping from Alfred, and it's located at the bottom of Wayne Tower, where there's an old train stop from an old train station that used to run deep underground in Gotham many years ago and has been mothballed and you know taken out and destroyed or just no, never used. So that's what we see in the trailers, I think, is that that big uh, stairwell and Bruce uh, pulls up in his motorcycle and you know he's got his little bat cave down there. It seems that's what this is. It's a train stop station that you know exists underneath Wayne Tower. Um, and so he's trying to keep all that you know secret from Alfred. Uh, but then Bruce, you know, he's the side project he's working on, the secret project he's doing is something that will become the Batmobile. So every summer he's been coming home for like the past year or two, and he's been working on this automobile, uh, this souped up car that he has, and he's uh, trying to make it faster, you know, adding different, you know, car parts to it to make it look more unique. And, uh, and then so he takes it out for a joy ride uh, now that he's back in town and he gets pulled over by the cops who then recognize him and they're like, eh, it's not worth the trouble. You're rich. You're just going to pay for the ticket and get out of here anyway. So you just move along, whatever. Go, if you want to race, go to the racetracks. So then Bruce is like, hey, maybe I will. So he goes to the racetracks and they won't let him enter the race because he's 17. So then he's like, okay, now I got to find another outlet. He's like, I'm, you know, everyone recognizes me too. So maybe I should start disguising myself when I go out so that people don't immediately see Bruce Wayne. And then there's like pictures of me in the headlines, you know, racing cars or crashing cars or whatever. And so he's like, yeah, maybe I should disguise myself a little bit. So while he's on that path, we have Edward Nashton, who is at the orphanage and he's still living there and no one's adopted him. And he talks to this woman named Bev, who works at the front desk, who's like trying to pry him for information, wondering where he's going, but he's of age enough to where he can go get a job. And so he's like, yeah, I have a job. Uh, you know, I ride a bike, a bicycle, and I deliver Italian food for this Italian restaurant around the city. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go to work. And she's like, okay, well, you know, just write down why you're leaving and where you're going and what time you'll be back. Um, and, you know, because we have a curfew or whatever, so you can go, you know, do that for a few hours and you got to be back here. So it's kind of showing his life at the orphanage and again, him kind of building resentment to things, but also being on a schedule. So it's like all these things are like uh, building his personality, right? So I think the writer, uh, David Lumen does a good job of kind of giving you that peak while also it being a young adult book without going into too much detail. At least that's what I've extrapolated from some of these uh, moments. So that's what I've kind of liked. So he rides a bicycle and Bruce has this souped up car that he's been working on. So again, just showing the differences between these two um, individuals. Uh, then Bruce meets a woman, a young lady named Dex, who is actually Dorothy Alexandra is her full name, but she goes by Dex and he introduces himself as Paul. So he's actually not going by Bruce Wayne and he's wearing a hat and he's kind of like scuffed his face up a little bit. He wears a baggy jacket to make it look like you can't really tell his body type, you know, and he wears these combat boots and he just dresses in a way that no picture of Bruce Wayne has ever been shown. Like normally he's like in, you know, Armani or some nice suit or something. So he's dressing very down and, uh, and, and kind of playing down his looks even too. And so he starts befriending this girl named Dex who introduces him to some other kids in Gotham who have rich parents and stuff who street race illegally and uh, and they all put in 50 bucks and whoever wins the race gets that pool at the end of the race so uh, so bruce is starting to make friends and he's you know going down that path and he, he's really liking Dex. like they spend a couple chapters building that relationship a little bit and bruce kind of is taken by her he's he likes her personality she's very forward she talks a lot and bruce is the opposite you know but even though she knows him as paul you know they're still they're still building a friendship together and so uh, so while that's happening edward is finishing his route of delivering food and he almost gets hit by the cars that are street racing so when bruce enters a street race they're you know they're going through the streets of gotham and they mention a bunch of places they mention the bowery financial district uh, passing arkham asylum the iceberg fish company which could be the iceberg lounge one day if uh, you know penguin runs it um, and then robinson park and these are all places from the comic books so i thought that was pretty cool for the world building aspects of everything but they you know as they're street racing they almost hit edward and so he gets angry about that and he follows the direction they went in and ends up seeing them at the end of their race, you know, and uh, Dex won, she gets her money. And he's like, you know what? And he doesn't recognize Bruce because Bruce is, like I said, he's wearing a cap. He's kind of downplaying his looks and he doesn't talk that much. And he's kind of standing off to the side. So Edward doesn't even really notice him. And he's looking at all these kids celebrating the race. And he's like, you know what? These kids, what they're doing is illegal and they're just showing off. They're rich. You know, they could crash a car. Their parents will buy him another one. And again, that disdain is building up. 
So he says, I wonder what will happen if someone sabotages their little race because this is ridiculous. They almost killed me and no one stopped to check and see if I was going to be okay, or, you know, if, if I was okay. Um, then most of them didn't even notice they almost hit me. So he puts in a plan into effect where he's going to somehow sabotage their race, uh, which I thought was was pretty cool. And again, building that character, um, because I have a theory about him for the movie, and I'll talk about that here at the end. But first, um, you know, going back to Edward, he does eventually build this little pipe bomb thing, puts it into the tailpipe of one of the cars. We don't know which one at first. We think it's Bruce's. But then Bruce gets in the race and him and Dex are in first and second place and they're trying to pass each other. And then something explodes at the back of Dex's car and sends her off the road and right into a wall where her car explodes and catches on fire. And Bruce immediately pulls his car over, jumps out, kicks the window in and pulls her to safety just before her car fully explodes. Like it, like there was a, a small impact or a small a blast from the, the thing in the tailpipe. And then when she crashed, there was that wreck and gasoline spilling and a fire started. And then the big boom came after he pulled her out. So Bruce, as Paul, saved Dex's life. And she's like, hey, thank you so much. He's like, no problem. He goes, are you okay? Are you going to be fine? He's like, yeah. And she goes, because the cops are coming. I can't be here. She's like, that's okay. Like, you know, if you need to go or whatever. And he's like, yeah, but before I do, I want to take a sample of that, of your tailpipe. Uh, I, I saw something explode right before you crashed. And she's like, okay. And so he takes his hat off to gather some of the evidence. And uh, and then she sees his face. And she's like, wait a minute, don't I know you? And he's like, uh, no, no. He's like, I, I got to go. He's like, I'll, I'll see you next time. And so he gets in his car and he drives away from the scene. And meanwhile, you know, she's like, well, thanks, you know, Paul for, for helping me. But she's starting to put it together of like, maybe he's not really Paul. And, and while that's, while, you know, he leaves and she's figuring that out and the cops arrive, Edward watches the aftermath of what he's done. He's like, okay, no one died. Uh, he goes, but my plan worked. I did something to stop this because now all these kids are going to lay low. They don't want to be caught street racing. So it's going to cause them to lay low for a while. And these streets will be, you know, quieter at night and people won't get disrupted. People who have to go to work the next day. They won't be interrupted from their sleep. And so it's showing that there is some level of concern, not really uh, for his fellow man on some level, but it's, it's Edward is building this um, you know, I guess anger, like that disdain for people and family and life and all that stuff is growing, but now it's turning into something else. It, it's becoming where he's like, no, maybe I'm here to break the law to protect people. And that personality is starting to build. And which is similar to what Bruce is going to be getting to at a certain point in this book. So I kind of like that because I have a theory that in this movie, Riddler will be not exactly a bad guy. He'll be killing politicians and, and people that ha are in power and you know rich and everything like that because he has a disdain for them but also i think because he thinks they're connected to something bigger and he thinks by exposing these people and taking them down he's somehow saving gotham um, and i think that's what's going to be the dividing point between him and bruce in this movie is riddler is someone who doesn't have the brawn but he has the brains and bruce is like a mix of both and they're going to be going at it because Riddler's going to be killing people, which is against Batman. It's crossing his line. So he doesn't like when people kill, but he, I think he's going to find out that Riddler's killing people is not random. It's specific and specific to people who may be corrupt or bad. And so it looks like Riddler sees himself as like a jigsaw or like someone who is more than a vigilante, but someone who's like a serial killer in a way who's killing bad people. Um, and then you have Batman, who's a vigilante, but just, you know, tries to get them locked up because he believes in the system. And whereas Riddler doesn't. So all of those threads are building here. So that seems to be just proven more of my theory based on the trailers I've seen of the movie of how these characters are going to play out in the movie. But I mean, I still could be wrong. So we'll have to see when the movie comes out. But after Bruce saves Dex and everything, um, he goes back to Wayne Tower and he's in his man cave. I guess that's what Alfred calls it because Alfred walks in on him. Uh, as he's looking at the the stuff from the tailpipe and trying to figure out what happened because throughout the story they say that Bruce took like a criminology class and he's like learning how to do that kind of stuff and getting into forensics um so it's just again all these little things building at this age of like 16 17 and 18 uh during this time in Bruce's life and so uh so he's studying this stuff and Alfred walks in and is like yeah you know I know about this place I know you come down here and I know you've been building this car I know you're street racing and I want to know, did you win tonight? And he's like, no, I didn't, um, but I did save a girl's life. And then, you know, Alfred's like looking at the car and he's like, you know, Bruce, you know, I don't think anything we do can bring your parents back. And he goes, but, um, you know, I, in Alfred's 
you know, interpretation of what Bruce is going through. He thinks he, Bruce built this car as a way to run away, like, a, you know, to escape, like, hey, I know you built this car to kind of escape facing your parents' death and, you know, the trauma that caused, and you're kind of running away from responsibility and things. He goes, um, and I understand you need to take risks. You're young. I was young once. I made mistakes. I took risks. He's like, so I encourage you to take risks, but I want you to be safe, but I also want you to consider the direction you're heading. Maybe you shouldn't be running away from these dangerous things that uh, that you're getting it mixed up in and stuff. He's like, maybe, you know, you should be running towards them. Uh, and he's really referring to his parents. Uh, he's not really referring to street racing and, and putting his life at risk. He mentions Bruce's parents and we find out in this chapter that Bruce's parents' murder was never solved. Nobody ever went to jail for killing the Waynes. And I thought that was the biggest revelation of this uh, going into the movie now, because I'm like, oh my God, no one solved that murder. That's intense, like that's really intense. Uh, you know, so it makes you start wondering, well, how? Like, you know, how did someone kill two of the most powerful people in Gotham and it not, you know, and get away with it? It's, it's pretty crazy. So I'm curious to see how the movie handles that because obviously we don't get any answers in the books. We just got that nugget of information there. And I thought that was pretty crazy. I was like, wow, I can't believe that. So, um, so when Alfred's talking to him, he's referring to maybe don't run away from, you know, you, you're trying to solve things. You're trying to get into all this, you know, crime and forensics and all the stuff. And he's like, I don't, I don't really know the path you're heading in, but if it's away from, you know, finding answers, I think you should turn around and run towards the answers is basically what Alfred's saying. And so Bruce is like, you know what, maybe he's right. So he pulls out a journal, he marks down the day and he says, you know, day, day one of my new mission. And he says, uh, running towards something. And, uh, and that's kind of where, uh, the, the first part of this book ends. He's like, maybe Alfred's onto something. So I, I don't know. So far I'm digging this. I think it's a fun book. It's a fun read. It's a quick read too. Uh, the fact that I got through 68 pages in like two nights, um, you know, it was, it was, or maybe three nights. Yeah. About three nights. So I did about 20 pages a night or something. And, uh, and it's, it's got my interest, but it also, every time they reveal something about the world, my mind starts going to all these different places thinking about how this is going to play out in the film. Uh, so I'm getting more and more excited now for this movie. I, I'm, I'm still hesitant. I still feel like, uh, you know, a three hour Batman movie feels a little pretentious to me. And I don't like to use that term that much. And I, again, I don't really like when directors say I'm making a realistic take on Batman because I'm like, he's a guy in a bat suit. Like really how realistic can you make that? Uh, and plus that cancels out a lot of his rogues galleries. Uh, there's, you can't really do, uh, visually stunning versions of Clayface or Man Bat or anything like that, um, or even maybe Poison Ivy to an extent, because you're grounding it, you know, and I, I'm not a big fan of that term when it comes to things. Uh, but uh, but I do have a theory about this movie, but I'll talk more about that in the second half when, you know, when I get through the, the last 60 something pages of this book, um, I'll talk about, you know, my theories then, because I'll probably release that video closer to when the movie comes out at the beginning of March. So I would say if you're out there and you just want to read something fun and you want some glimpses into this new Batman film, this is a good way, you know, a good place to start and a good thing to read because, um, you know, it is, it's, it's given us these little nuggets and I'm, I'm kind of intrigued by that. Uh, and I think the writing is pretty good. Like I said, there's uh, there's some moments where the writer is starting to talk about car stuff, but I don't know if the writer knows anything about car stuff or just like basic stuff. So he doesn't get into full details. And I'm like, well, is he shying away from that so he can avoid giving details? Or is he just trying to keep it a young adult book and he doesn't want to bore some younger kid with all these details of the car? But I'm like, yeah, if it's Bruce's interest in the book, I feel like you should probably put some of those details of exactly what Bruce is doing into the book, you know, because it just helps paint a better picture. Um, and then it might get someone who's reading this to go Google like, oh, what is that car part or what does that mean? You know, and they'll go look it up. Um, at least that's the hope, right? So, I, but I, other than that, I don't really have any critiques of this so far. I thought the first half of this book was really solid. The book also comes with this like little poster that you can cut out of the back of the book. Um, so yeah, I just used like a little exacto knife and just went down the side and cut it out real quick. And then I also got uh, recently this Batman activity book which has a bunch of like puzzles in there, Riz Riddler things, things to solve, um, mazes, you know, stuff like that, word crosswords, all that stuff. Um, but it also has a bunch of little mini posters in it. Uh, so I got the Jim Lee artwork, which I, I really wanted a poster of this. So now I can frame this and hang it on the wall. You also got other cool images from the movie like this with the Batmobile. And there's even a group of images at the back of the book that you can piece together and make one giant poster 
uh, close to the size of that right there. I'm pointing at the door, but yeah, there, that poster there, um, there's something along that size that you can cut out and, and piece together and make a poster that big. So that's pretty cool too. So if you're out there, you know, you want to do an activity book, this is $7.99. If you want to read a story uh, set before the movie, this is $9.99. Go pick these up. Like I said, I'll put links to them on Amazon down below so you can get them today if you'd like. That's it for me. Overall, if I had to rate the first half of this book, I would say I would give it maybe an eight out of 10 so far because I like the little world building things and I'm intrigued. You know, I think there's some things in here psychologically that they're doing with Batman that have been present in the comics before and maybe get glimpses of them here and there in like one or two scenes in some of the previous movie adaptations or TV show adaptations, but um, that they're trying to put new spins on or dive deeper into. And I kind of like that. I kind of like the, the psychology of Bruce Wayne. Um, before I used to find Bruce Wayne a little kind of two dimensional at times and kind of boring because he's always you know portrayed as the best at everything. So seeing him struggling and figuring things out is very exciting and actually makes him an interesting character to me but also as someone who just you know lost my best friend recently with with echo i, I that's the deepest grief i felt um in a, in a long time and i think i realize now that what grief can do to you if you if you let it and it i think it made me understand bruce a little bit more which is kind of why i've been diving a little bit more into batman stuff lately i was already on that path i think anyway and then it, that just kind of illuminated some of how Bruce might feel like a fraction of what it must be like, because obviously it must be escalated tenfold to lose your parents at such a young age and the grief you feel from that will last a lifetime, you know? So it made me understand the character a little bit more and that's why we're doing a little bit more of a deep dive into him as the Batman movie is coming up and also as the Batman animated series uh, is gonna be releasing in a box set. So I'll have reviews of those seasons coming very soon. I'll have the other half of this book coming soon. I'll have more interviews with Sam Liu and Brandon Vietti coming soon. And then obviously I'll have a review of the Batman film after I see it when it drops on March 4th. So thanks so much. Let me know if you have any Batman comments you wanna make, anything you wanna say about this book or other Batman stories, let me know down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.